Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode we begin by wondering about Gilly Mission 1, which, um, well let's click on it. Uh, we have 147 days of oxygen left. Now if I go directly to Gilly Station 1 right now, or Gilly Mission 1 right now, um, it will go back to depleting very quickly. Uh, I note that the battery life is only one hour, somebody pointed out that the solar panels were still retracted. And I don't remember putting a fuel cell on it, that was another suggestion. So uh, Sir Mortimer in the comments said that I should be fine as long as I don't load the vessel after restarting the game. So how do I do its maneuvers, basically, is the question. Um, maybe I should interpret that as I need to load another vessel first. So let's try that, I don't know. Kerbin Station 1 doesn't have anybody on board and in theory shouldn't have any consumption at all. So uh, let's see. Uh, indeed, it does not. Now, what what would be the best way for me to approach Gilly Mission One at this point? Um, if I if I directly switch to it, is that better than going to? Uh, so far, I've only been doing the tracking station. So let's uh, verify here what the situation at Gilly Mission One is right now. Still 147 days. Okay, and it is around Gilly. Let me just try and switch to it over here. It's not around Gilly anymore, it's on escape. So let's see what happens and also check for fuel cells and do other things. Well now the oxygen's down to 35 minutes. I'm gonna be manually replenishing it. So it's got this situation that suggested a fuel cell where we are uh, depleting oxygen and restoring nitrogen at about the same rate. Why a fuel cell would do that I have no idea. Um, but okay, I get. Uh, I guess it's a mod propellant fuel cell running on hydrazine, but then why does it need, I don't know. Uh, okay, so fuel cells, do we have any fuel cells? I mean, anyway, let's get the solar panels out. Let's see if that fixes, I mean, but we had previously gone on an EVA with Bill to fix the treadmill and having solar panels out did not help during that time when we had oxygen depletion. So I doubt it's going to help now. Oh, wait, it did. Hmm. But, so there's a fuel cell on here somewhere? It beats me where it could be, though. This is one reason why I didn't want fuel cells, is because sometimes they deplete resources that you might want, and especially if it depletes oxygen, that's not a good thing. It should, the way it would work in realism overall, hopefully, I don't know if they've messed with this, is that it depletes liquid oxygen instead, so that it doesn't deplete the breathable oxygen. I don't know if uh, which one it does right now, but uh, that would be the ideal situation. I don't use fuel cells very much because of this worry, but um, yeah. Liquid oxygen is better because the Kerbals won't be breathing that. Okay, well, yeah, all right. Well, bring out this. Uh, congratulations, who suggested the solar panels? Bring out the solar panels works. Let me put back the oxygen that we had depleted. I don't know why it should be depleting at that time anyway. But, yeah. Okay, I backed out of the save, and in theory, I've restored Gilly Station 1's food, water, and oxygen. Uh, but we can't check in here. So, but I wanted to take a look at Gilly Mission 1, and I don't think I've got any fuel cells. That's what a fuel cell looks like, and I definitely did not put one on here. And, again, the thing about uh, oxygen, I like it, I prefer it to be liquid oxygen, just so that it doesn't deplete the breathable oxygen. And then what you have is uh, oxygen to liquid oxygen cryocooler uh, to um, convert them. And, of course, uh, you could have just uh, liquid oxygen to the oxygen boiler to convert liquid oxygen to oxygen. And, um, yeah, that would be a little bit better. Of course, the boiler doesn't really need to take any energy at all, but the cryocooler does. But, uh, yeah, I prefer that sort of setup, but I rarely see that. Anyway, yeah, let's just go back to the mission and see if we can bring those kernels back finally so we don't have to worry about them. Okay, as we can see, I've brought it up to 287 days of oxygen, and we're going to turn to it and see if that works. If I can just turn to it like this and it's not going to have any problems, then we can proceed. It's got its node in 15 days. Uh, well, 287 and holding. All right, 
287 and holding. Bill is a little bit crazy. Romor is fine. And what is Romor anyway? An engineer. So they're both engineers. And Romor already has three stars. So that's fine. 14 days so that we can exit. Because we're in this really high long orbital period orbit. And we actually have to get all the way around to here apparently. RCS failed on Euphrates Station. Well, if it's gone for good, it's gone for good. We should have backup RCS. And if it's gone for good, at least it's not constantly firing, right? Maybe. I hope. <laughs> I hope it's not a constantly firing thing if it's gone for good. We'll probably try and get closer to Kerbin on the actual burn than is plotted right here, but... Let us see. Power is still fine. This was designed before I made the nitrogen change, so it's carrying the original load of nitrogen. Basically 10 times more than it needed to carry. Though actually, that's another thing. Uh, it was replenishing the nitrogen, wasn't it? So I wasn't taking that into account when I... I added back the oxygen, but I didn't decrease the nitrogen. We're carrying an extra nitrogen load that we don't need. Uh, that'll be fine, I guess. We're going to be a little bit late on this burn, but considering the nature of our orbit, it's probably okay. It's such a long orbit. It's not a big fraction of the orbit. We're not going to be changing angles very much. Okay, we should be getting close here. There it is. I don't see a particular reason why we... Oh, that's a rough angle. But... Um, you know, a polar pass is not a bad thing. 162 is fine. I mean, there are... I mean, I don't know where we're going to be coming in in relation to mountains and everything. So that's a separate issue. But if we drag this over here, um, we can make it looser. We can still make orbit with about 600. We've got 800 left. If we use all of it up, it can get a little bit cozy. All right. Uh, so basically, still, what's going to happen is one of our Kerbals is going to go into the pod, use the RCS. Oh, I hope we have enough RCS fuel left. I guess if there's an imaginary fuel cell, it had to have been using the mop repellent plus the oxygen to give us electric charge. But the idea was that one Kerbal will use the RCS up at apoapsis to reduce the periapsis and then return. And then the other would have to be rescued. But maybe we should just send a two Kerbal pod out to bring both of them back. We'll see. Okay, anyway, so this is on its way back. And uh, note in 130 days, so they should be back in 130 days, which means... Basically, even with our, the reduced oxygen, even if I hadn't restored the oxygen, maybe they would have made it back just fine. Though, again, there's that period of time when they'd be hanging out around Kerbin, waiting for the pickup. And, of course, uh, getting into this... We could correct this polar orbit, but actually that might make it more interesting for me. <laughs> it's just, just for a challenge. Uh, not much of a challenge, but uh, we could rendezvous with them in a polar orbit that could be a little bit of fun. Okay. So we'll leave it as it is. And let's just make sure we have an alarm so that we don't overshoot that. Um, I don't want the maneuver node. Uh, this is why I sometimes make a dummy maneuver node, because the SOI change is just the one out of EVE. Uh, let's add that alarm then. Okay, but we'll, we'll follow along with them. They're our most important mission right now. I should check on our Minmus station, Euphrates station. They should be fine for food, water, and oxygen for the next 130 days. And everything else. Battery life, I guess they're on the dark side of Minmus, which is fair. Stress, a little bit of stress, lots of radiation. Okay, we are in solar space now. Let's get the SOI change alarm now. 
Oh, crop is ready to be harvested on your Freddy station and a treadmill malfunction. Okay, we'll check on your Freddy station. We've got a lot of Kerbals on there. We should do our due diligence and repair the treadmill and and uh, harvest the crop. Okay, oh, wait. Oh, uh, the busted RCS is uh, constantly fire. Gosh darn it. Well, but then what are we going to do about it? Is it go it's going to continually waste RCS, isn't it? Wait, no. Yeah, it's not using any mob propellant. Okay, so it's just looking like that. It's not actually constantly using RCS. Phew. Well, good. Uh, Jessely can do the EVA to repair the treadmill. Oh, Jess Lee was already on that module. Probably because that treadmill's been a bit of a pain anyway, huh? Okay, repair treadmill. Okay, that's fully operational. Let's inspect that. Practically new. Okay. Okay, board. Jeez. All right, greenhouse. Ready to harvest. Well... Uh, here comes our 20 or so food, 28 food, and it's growing again. Hey, well, I mean, at least we're getting something out of it. This is a little bit awkward, though. Yeah, I'm gonna need KIS, KAS, to, uh, just so like, we can remove those. I hope we can remove them when they're busted, or, I mean, I, I wonder if Jess Lee can do something about it right now. Uh, no, let's have, uh... Well, nope, she's the engineer on board. There's no other engineer. All right. Let's see if she can do something about it, like remove it or something. Doesn't seem like it. She's right next to it. Okay, nope. So KIS and KES might be our only means of not having that firing all the time. Okay, our business here is done. Uh, but we have the oxygen situation here. What the... Okay, so do we... We're on the nighttime side. Yeah. Um, I, I want to turn off this imaginary fuel cell that I never put on. That would be helpful. It's definitely an imaginary fuel cell because now it's using the mod propellant. Oh, gosh darn it. Okay, I'm going to restart before it depletes it too much. Okay, after restarting, the oxygen situation on your Euphrates station is stable. Um, I wonder if there's some sort of setting I'm missing that adds a monopropellant thing to... a uh, monopropellant fuel cell to everything in Kerbalism. Let's see. Um, or at least uh, it should wait longer before... Uh, using a fuel cell to replenish electric charge. Yeah, I mean, if there was a setting that said uh, only use a fuel cell to replenish electric charge if the electric charge is down to like 10% or something, that'd be good. I do have electric charge warnings off, but that's probably for the best. Um, we have too many missions otherwise. Alright, well, anyway, back to Gilly Mission 1 and what we're trying to do there. Solar panel malfunctioned on Ike Station, that we can't do anything about. And life support malfunctioned on Ike Station. We're gonna have to send somebody over to visit Ike Station once it needs to be occupied. And um, repair all that stuff. If it's still repairable, of course. It could just be permanently busted by then. Bill Kerman is losing his mind. Concentration is becoming a problem. Hold on, let's see what level we're at there. It's only 33% stress, honestly. Hope, hopefully, Romore can sedate him. Uh, coronal mass ejection hit Gilly Mission 1. Storm duration, 5 hours. So, once again, we see it's uh, 5 rads per hour, still. Uh, even though we are now further away from... Uh, from uh, the sun then eve right it was five rads per hour there it's still five rads per hour here and it's still five rads per hour at kerbin 
and so it doesn't diminish with distance and um, even though we have full shielding all around see 20 millimeters lead there's no module on here that has less than full shielding and uh, let's uh, just as a test uh, move uh, Romor is already in here actually that's a good so Romor is here yeah and Bill is up front but it doesn't give a different radiation exposure number well let's see let's uh, transfer let's see if the radiation uh, number changes when I transfer Bill over to here though that does leave the whole thing without any control nope so it doesn't matter which module you're in but I mean I guess if but but it's not really calculating based on module right otherwise Wilmore and Bill would have had different numbers it gives one number for the entire vessel so I'm not too sure it works that way where if this capsule did have less shielding uh, it would be calculated separately I think uh, the radiation is calculated for the entire vessel at once not 100% sure about that but otherwise they'd have to have broken out that number into separate numbers here uh, for how much they're getting okay solar storm is over well Romor only got 8% out of that one Bill got 43 altogether which is basically 8% more so not the worst solar storm ever now when looking up uh, radiation expectations you gotta watch out um, a lot of them have significant buffer and uncertainties involved so the more uncertainty there is about something the more of a buffer you need and some of them some of the estimates uh, do a four times uh, safety factor uh, basically you want some sort of safety factor you know uh, when it comes to wing flex it might be 1.5 times you know how much uh, wing loading you can do structural things 1.5 times but the more uncertain something is, the bigger the safety factor needs to be. And a lot of studies do a four times safety factor on the radiation. And so if you look up those studies and go, okay, well, this is how much radiation they're expecting. That's four times what the real life radiation really would be. So you have to, you have to watch out for whether they're talking about how much they're planning for uh, to build their spacecraft and how much is actually going to happen. These are two separate things. Uh, it's complicated. So far, uh, our intended Mars spacecraft, they don't have much radiation shielding because radiation shielding is heavy and difficult to really plan for. That's the funny thing about radiation. It's not just that the thicker your shielding, the less radiation you're gonna get because different types of radiation penetrate differently and different wavelengths of radiation so you have to like match the thickness of the of the shielding with the kind of radiation that you're trying to block out reaction wheel problem on uh, Eve probe 2 but we were able to remotely fix that getting close to earth uh, Kerbin now everything seems to be fine as far as supplies go we have a hundred days of oxygen left and uh, 132 days of food probably when I built this I made sure to put more oxygen than food I would think so but you know given all the chaos we'll take what we can get 105 degree inclination you know <laughs> there, there are inclinations and then there are inclinations maybe we should try to not have 105 let's do a brief inclination change let's see how much it'll cost Let's make it polar. We'll end up with a polar station temporarily, but 85 degrees is fine. And probably a higher orbit is good so that it's not tempted to run on the imaginary fuel cell too much. <laughs> if we were really clever, we could have put it into a orbit that got constant sunlight for the time being at least. But this approach won't. This approach will go behind Kerbin for some time. Engine failed on Euphrates station. It's gone for good. Well, hopefully it's not just constantly firing or looking like it's constantly firing. 
We do have plenty of engines on Euphrates Station. That's looking awful blue. I hope there's some land down there and they haven't uh, let the whole global warming thing run away with itself. If you've been out for a while, Scatterer can do some strange things. Exposed to extreme radiation. When aren't we, really? Oh, that, uh, yeah, Scatterer is doing some strange things. Yep, yep. We, we are going to take some time, so let's start. Well, on the whole, this worked pretty well. We should definitely top it up with fuel and food, water, and oxygen. And maybe send it out again. In retrospect, I wish we had a docking port on the tail so we could extend it kind of thing. I'm looking for a one-day orbit to ensure a relatively quick rendezvous. And also, hopefully, minimal electric charge loss leading to weird stuff happening. Okay, so they are in orbit around Kerbin. Let's get them back and we'll use another pod for that. Okay, well, I've got a mission on the pad to rescue our Kerbals from Gilly Mission 1. Not really rescue, recover our Kerbals from Gilly Mission 1. And I've called it Norbert because I'm just going with Hagrid's pets from Harry Potter. We had previously named one Fluffy and I sort of modified Fluffy for this. But I just got a message from Kerbalism saying that the oxygen reserves on Gilly Mission 1 are really low and people are panicking. I'm hoping that's just because it's a low percentage of the total volume. Uh, it still says 89 days here, but I don't like the whole panicking thing. Um, here, uh, yeah, it says 15%. I guess that's just an alarm for when it reaches 15%. So hopefully it's okay, but geez, as if we need more people panicking. So the mission is going down here and uh, we need to line up, of course. They're crossing the radiation belt a few times, and one hopes that that's not too bad. As much as I don't want a nighttime launch, maybe just heading south from here is the best best way to go. So you can see uh, 176 degrees, so that's our basically our launch azimuth, not quite, but... Okay, throttle up, SAS is on. It is overbuilt quite a bit. We got 7,500 meters per second, basically. And we've got RCS fuel on top of that mod propellant there. And uh, anyway, ignition. And launch. Oh, I could do with some auto strutting. Um, let's, let's do that now. Yeah, okay. Hopefully that'll be not so bad. <laughs> um... Uh, we actually could do with a roll too, but we'll do that later. Um, heading 176. Well, that was less than perfect, but we're we're a go. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. Booster set. Okay, even though it's sort of tilted in a little bit, and I had to auto strut on the fly, they separated fine. That is good. This stage should be more than enough to get us to orbit. Could probably start off the rendezvous. So on top, it's sort of a modified version of the Fluffy. And here, instead of having both a Terrier stage and a Spark stage, we've just got a Terrier and this is all one stage now. I took out the decoupler in one of the tanks, so it's all scrunched together. Uh, between this tank and that tank is a series of, um, what you call, batteries. That's how we get our 970 electric charge. I used the air intake at the top because I really hate the pointy nose cone. That might have late at the rate it's going, but we'll see. Um, obviously not the most aerodynamically ideal situation, but I'd like a different nose cone. That pointy nose cone is a pain. It doesn't look good at all. I'm looking at the inclination most of all, so let's cut it there. Woo! We needed a lot more auto strutting, come to think of it. Okay, we are coasting. Well, now that we are in space, let's get the communitrons out. Let me get the solar panels out. 
I think I'll just deorbit this stage even though it has plenty of delta V left. Okay, that should be fine. Separation. Ah, I neglected to let go of the nose cone while we were still suborbital. Well, shucks. Um, no, let, let's, let's use some fuel and do it properly. That's convincingly suborbital, but I think the tracking station won't get rid of it on its own. You have to be below 30 kilometers. I'll have to get rid of it manually. But anyway, it's off. Heck, it should be at a lower orbit because I released it retrograde, right? Whoa, okay. Uh, yeah, putting this tank on those battery packs, you know, the small battery packs, the small circular ones, not a good idea. Hold on. At least in physical time warp. Let me auto strut to root part, and then maybe... Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, we are now in render range and probably a little bit late on doing this burn. No, I think it's all right. We don't need to dock to it and might be safer if we don't. Then again, I don't trust Bill to EVA right now. Okay, pretty interesting sight right there. One thing we didn't do is I only have half shielding on here, so that's one downside to this system. But at this point, uh, the oxygen reserves restored. I, I hope there's not going to be any detrimental rebalancing. Anyway, um, yeah, there's not that much oxygen over on the visiting craft side. Anyway, transfer crew, Bill Kerman to the pod. It says crew transfer interrupted, but I think... It worked. We'll check in a moment. Okay, and yes, Bill and Romor are in the transfer vehicle. And I'm not going to send supplies over to the other side this time. We'll have a dedicated supply vessel for that. For now, we're going to just undock and bring them back. It's a little bit of a waste. Well, really a lot of a waste, but I feel safer about it. And we should have a vehicle that can fully resupply that. And we might not be sending it over to Eve next time. We might be sending it over to Duna. We'll see. Okay, that is a good re-entry orbit. Though I think as we approach periapsis, I can use the remaining fuel to slow our uh, craft down a bit. Are we gonna land in the Arctic on the ice caps or something? That might be good. Or we'll probably just overshoot it like I normally do. Okay, that'll be good enough. Let's toss off the service module. After ensuring that we've got a capsule that's topped off. Yes, we do. We are currently passing over the pole. Norbert is crossing the radiation belt? I don't think so. Definitely this deep in the atmosphere, we're not crossing the radiation belt. Ah, uh, we're over water. No luck. Okay, parachutes. I guess armed and deployed. Alright. And full deployment gets us to 5.6-ish. Well, and with that, despite a whole lot of problems, our interplanetary, our first interplanetary mission with a Kerbal will be a success as soon as we splash down. We actually brought back an extra Kerbal. Uh, we only sent one out, we're bringing two back. Normally that doesn't happen on planetary missions, but here we are.
Okay, recover. <laughs> the KSC is underwater. Anyway, we got some recover. Wow, 31 XP for Bill and 29 XP for Romor. Of course, it just got them to level 3, which they were already at anyway. Uh, but as far as World's First, started constructing the first station. We've done that a long time ago. First docking maneuver. Um, I guess it considered the Gilly mission the first station around Kerbin some, for some... Uh, I think it's because I had that contract pack with contract configurator. Anyway, rescue roll more got us 400,000. So that's good. And we should add the next Duna window because probably that Gilly mission is going to re be repurposed uh, as a Duna mission. But it's going to be a long time. One year and 243 days. So we've got time on that. Of course, we're getting this Ike station there first. Okay, so that's the plan. But I think I've done enough for this episode. We got them back and I'm happy with that. So... Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.